We start out with Colonel School versus Fire Chefs. Both teams off to a slightly slow start this season, but they're still very much in the hunt. Earl and Dickberg and Shandy worthless for Colonel School. Whereas on the Chefs, it's Danny Cyanide. It's all about the Cyanide. Colonel School taking over after a bad drive from the Fire Chefs to get things started, and they're already eating up the yardage. Kremp and Quister there going 39 yards. Pretty quick for a human. Yeah, humans not renowned for their speed. Dickberg getting the catch there on first down goes 14. Grabthorn looks towards the end zone, finds Worthless, and there's a touchdown. Fantastic running from Danny Cyanide gets 16 yards there in the first down. If oh, she can keep it up, that'll be solid. But that's an excellent pass out to Crumble, who's going to eat up most of the field before being brought down at the 10 yard line. 46 yards there. Super. Uh, Kate Freightmaster's going to take off. Uh, breaking tackles all the way, heads upfield and into the end zone, one all. Another big pass completes to Dick Berg, who's breaking tackles on his way towards the uh, opposing end zone. Uh, 29 yards on that one, but it's immediately picked off. Vivian Crumble doing the damage, and that's her fourth of the year. Uh, the Chef's taking back over again, and this is likely to come over to turnovers. Um, although, well, hold on, uh, speaking of which, there's another one. Good times. Massive throw to Vivian Crumble. Uh, she's not going to get caught, and that's a 47-yard top. Well, I said they needed to respond quickly, and they did. Uh, big sack fumble, but Jessica Therapy picked it up, uh, and Colonel School maintained possession. Freightmaster's been running well as well, but that's a good throw, and Ferrite's in, and for the first time in the game, the Chefs take the lead. Cramp Inquisitor goes down, having been injured by Percy Riots, and that's actually going to be a problem for Colonel School. Is Therapy, who's been brought off the line to now play runner, I don't know how well that's going to work, but I mean, that pass completed, so, you know, there's there's life in that one. Uh, therapy makes the catch and is in for 13. Uh, four all now the score as we hit half time, and effectively we're going from scratch. Uh, Vivian Crumble is down for the chefs, having been injured by Earl and Dick, but he's only little. I know, but he's uh, savage. Well, clearly. Uh, Colonel School could put this one to bed now. 15 plays remain, and that's another completed pass to Worthless, who breaks a tackle and gets down to the 10-yard line. 14 left on the clock, uh, as Isla Monotheism, who's come in off the bench, and then left again. Dick Berg getting his second injury of the day. The uh, Colonel School score, and uh, that is going to put this game to bed. 7-4 now the score, and uh, the sacks keep coming. Percy Wright stops. This one's all over. Score, Colonel School 8, Fire Chefs 4. This was a big place kind of a game, and the fact that it went over a 1,000 yards between the two teams was really a demonstration of that. But the Chefs fell apart when the injuries started piling up. Colonel School had just a slight advantage throughout the entire thing, but over the course of the game, they really managed to push that advantage. Erlen Dickberg, your star player of the game, 176 yards receiving. Couple of injuries inflicted, dirty little rascal. Uh, three passes deflected and interception. That'll get you there. The second early game this week is between the Wizard Hole Wizards and Bongolian Sea Raiders. And let me tell you, it's a battle of the offenses, this one. I can't see it being a low scoring game. Just can't see it. More than that, it's a meeting of superstars. Barry Turnips and Alonzo Hotti are the two greatest blockers in the entire league. We're going to see the Sea Raiders in action first, and Heimlich can only make two yards on first down, but Marigold gets the blocks that he needs uh, to take the first down, and more uh, keeps going, gets 18 yards on that one. It's only taken him to 100 for the season, but you know what? Everyone has to start somewhere. The rookie, Darkness Albright there, making a good carry as well. Heimlich on the run. Decides to throw it and finds Bernard Dunk, who was covered, but managed to get open. Down inside the 10-yard line, 41 yards on the reception. Marigold passes to the end zone, but it's fumbled. I uh, didn't see who fumbled there, but <laughs> that's not what you want to see. Nova Wild recovered the fumble, and uh, it's the Wizards now moving the ball back the other way. Gompen throws, finds Bongos, who breaks the tacklings into the end zone. Wizards take the lead first. Here comes Heimlich. He's past the line, and he's out into uh, a little bit of space, getting 10 yards. We haven't seen a big Heimlich play yet, but we will. All break catches in the flat, and there's nothing there. And then, once again, stopped for a loss. Heimlich has to do the whole thing himself by the looks of it. And he gets there before being brought down by Turnips chasing from behind. It is a cold day, so you should be expecting fumbles. Um, but... Uh, and what you should also be expecting is plays like this as Felonius Khan goes tearing up towards halfway. 31 yards on this, and I can't cut away. Nova Wild throws, finds Khan again. 
Uh, Whippet attempts to tackle, but is broken easily. Uh, another 39 yards there. The Wizards looking very good indeed. Spatula, no danger, is in. And it's 2-1 with 20 plays gone. Heimlich gets four on first down. Here goes Marigold. Gets a couple more. Darkness now, third and three. And is brought down at the line, opening up an opportunity for the Wizards to go ahead. We've got an injury in the line there, but Margot Spatula is continuing to carry the ball. It's Alonso Hotty who's down. Oh, that's a game changer. Uh, that's a massive, massive blow to the Sea Raiders. Mocker Badson coming up with the injury. However, and then they've thrown an interception. Dr. Gompen picks one off as his third of his career. And, uh, and it, it, this could spell real danger for the Raiders as the Wizards are now up 4-1. Third and one, Heimlich to deliver, and he does so. Breaks a tackle from Nova Wilden, has got loads of space. Goes all the way, and Dr. Gompen is down. Well, that almost evens things up. A major passer there for the Wizards has been taken out. It's Eric Progribniak who's come in, and uh, the pass is fumbled. The Sea Raiders might have some life in them yet. Uh, they're down 4-2 right now with 60 plays remaining in the game. Heimlich is... This is some of the best running I've seen from him. Uh, 18 yards on that one. He's now got 154 yards in the game. Uh, great pass out to Bernard Dunk, who's got Khan closing in. Khan make the tackle, though. Gets 32 yards. Uh, the Sea Raiders again challenging from around the 10-yard line. Uh, sack on first down. Heimlich, though, dodges everybody and gets in. That's his 27th touchdown this season. Raiders going nowhere on their drive, and once again, it's opened things up for the Wizards. A spatula runs in from 30 out. Uh, to put the score to 6-3. This is just not going the way of the Raiders. I picked them to win it all this season, you know. Picked them. Yeah, I did. And I was wrong. They fumbled it again. Nova Wild receives it and she's in. That's her 40th career touchdown. 7-3 now the score. I just can't see the Raiders coming back again. They've made too many mistakes. And with Hottie out on the sideline, they're not going to do it. No, <laughs> they're not. 8-3 now the score. Mike Heimlich has been injured by Barry Turnips to add insult to injury. Uh, and that's the 10th touchdown of the game for the Wizards. It's a disaster. It's a, it, I mean, the only way it could be worse is if one of those key injuries there was a fatality. But sadly, it wasn't. Uh, but the Wizards now running absolutely wild. Darkness Albright is down as well. Uh, Turnips coming up with another one. And there's another turnover. Oh, oh, look away. If you're a Sea Raiders fan now, stop watching. Seriously, I was going to stop commentating, but I mean, you've, you, can't, you can't stare away from the horror. Bernard Dunk fumbles the ball. Felonius Khan's got it back again. <laughs> there's, there's still time to score again, if you feel like it. Ten plays remaining. Nova Wild looking for a target. Nothing open, though. Throws the interception to Ziggy Whippet, who's going to get a good chunk of yards here. Uh, Spatula is going to try and close it down, but it's not going to work. And it's Turnips who makes the tackle eventually. Pulling one back. Well, sad golf clap for you there, Sea Raiders. Although they've they've forced another fumble, and it's Contagion who's got it this time. Okay, all right. Yeah, well, maybe they can score another consolation touchdown. Nope, they've thrown it away again. Khan coming up with the ball, and uh, he's still on his feet. Uh, Bongos could make a block here, does so. Uh, but that's a nice, big, chunky, maybe 40-yard interception return on a third and two. Spatula will get the first down, gets a good block, uh, manages to avoid the next three tackles. <laughs> Dear me. Yeah. Defense, people. It's a thing. You're allowed to have it. Progribniak runs and it finds the end zone. 12 plays four. Sea Raiders demolished. Another 1,000-yard game, but what a thrashing. Uh, the injury to Alonzo Hotti early on just destroying the Sea Raider offense. They were unable to convert on a regular basis. And as you can see, the top fan points for any player is only 29. That's not good. Over on the Wizards, it's Barry Turnips who gets player of the game with 88 fan points in total. 79 pancakes, which is a very good day. Yeah, that's a very, very good day. And inflicting two injuries along the way as well. Felonius Khan coming up with 258 yards receiving. Not a bad day's work all told. Tune in for the remainder of this week's games where we've got some absolute belters out there for you, not least of all Bordeaux's power against the Toy Masters. Toy Masters have struggled to find their form this season, but they are still a decent team, while the Bulldozer of Power outfit, their offense has struggled. I hope to see you for that. Tune in, and I'll be there. You should be there too. For Electro Sports TV, I'm Colonel Failure. Cheerio.